here. For the original system, we had uh, not in the real plane, but in uh, the C2. So it's got a co copy of the complex plane down here and a copy of the complex plane up there. But I'm being very conceptual here because each of those complex planes is two-dimensional, not just one-dimensional, but a similar idea applies when the coefficients are all real numbers. And we have a complex line, so that's a two-dimensional picture that I've compressed into one dimension. And then we have, uh, again, another one. And they cross at uh, exactly one place. Um, sometimes you can have systems where they uh, do not intersect, and other times you can have systems where they intersect in infinitely many points. But in this case, the second equation for A1 is the equation of a line that's what we would call horizontal in this conceptual picture. And the first one is the same line we started with. The point is, the, the important thing is that this intersection point did not change. All we did was change one of the equations to something that's simpler. By using the other equation, so the equation we changed is not for the same complex line. It is the equation of a different complex line. And it's, in some sense, just rotated through some amount to make it horizontal, but still going through the same intersection point. And the row operations, the elementary row operations, are built as described in your textbooks on linear algebra to make that happen so that the new figure still has the same intersection points as the original. And that means that the two systems are equivalent systems. And that's because the augmented matrices are equivalent, they're row equivalent. matrices. Uh, I should erase that and rewrite it so that I have room. All of these matrices in this list are row equivalent because we used elementary row operations to go from one to another. And in this next figure, the graphs of the two lines are the same as before. The second complex line gives us the graph of a constant function. And the first one 
we've just multiplied everything in the equation by the same number in that step. So we end up with exactly the same figure this time. Now, the next one is still the same figure. But the next one is a different figure. And the interesting thing about that is that in this complex, complex space, if you want to call it that, C2, what we have is for the second one, we have the same line, but it's multiplied by uh, 2 from when we first came across that horizontal line. And horizontal should be in quotes there because I'm drawing it as if it's in the real plane, but it's in the complex uh, complex plane, the, the C2. I'll write that again here. C with a superscript 2. But the, the first equation now has no appearance of the variable x2. So that means it's the, that its plot is the graph of a vertical line. And the important thing is that the figure is, although the figure is not the same and the line is not the same line, it still goes through the same point because the systems are equivalent systems. All of these systems are. Uh, each of these systems is equivalent to the previous one, meaning that they have the same solution set as the previous one. And the figure from here on does not change. But all we're doing with those additional row operations is simplifying the expressions that tell us the solutions. So if you're taking a test and you are faced with solving this system, then this is a lot of steps to do to solve that system, where it looks like we came up on our answer as early as here, just not written in the form that we usually want our answers. So, I have a different approach. Let's use admissible operations. So an admissible row operation is a row operation that can be achieved alternatively by performing a finite sequence of elementary row operations. So let's begin with the matrix A again. 
I'll need to look back at what it was because I've forgotten. I can see it in that original system. The first column is I minus I. The second column, 2, 1, and the right-hand sides are 0, 1. So I minus I, 2, 1, 0, 1. And now I'm going to produce matrices faster, a little bit faster. In my first step, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. It's going to be an elementary row operation. Row 1 is left alone. To row 2, I add row 1. And that still produces a 1. In the next row operation, I'm going to start with a 1, but I normally don't write it over there. I just wrote it this time so you'd see it. And I'm going to, oh, I, I made a mistake. a1 has to have this applied, and I get a 0 there a 3 there and a 1 there. Okay, now we can continue. So a from a1, I will now do this row operation. Same thing as before for the first row. So I'm multiplying it by 3. But in this same step, I'm going to subtract twice row 2. That will not be elementary, but it combines elementary row operations into one step. And I will not multiply row 2 by 2 this time. I just leave it alone. So I will not get A2. It will not even be a matrix in the list that we had before, A1 through A6. But it will be related. It will be, be row equivalent to them, because they are all row equivalent to each other. Let's call this one A to tilde. Now, from A to tilde, we'll produce a new matrix. But this new matrix I'll get by dividing row 2 by 3 and dividing row 1 by 3i. And that gives us the reduced row echelon form A6. So we can immediately write down our solution set. First I will write in set builder notation what we mean by the solution set, just so that you can understand it in the book as well as what I'm doing in here. So this means the set of all 
two by one matrices with complex numbers x1 and x2, and the vertical bar means such that. I think that's the original system. Oh, there was a two there. Okay. So not quite. Is that right? Yes. Okay. That's the that's the original description of the solution set. That can be taken as the problem we want to solve, and to solve it. We did all that work up above to reduce the description of this solution set. The set of all solutions of the given system. And we reduced it to just one vector with complex entries. Oh, why did that minus sign? Yeah, okay. So somehow I dropped a sign up here. Let's fix that. Okay. And that makes that a plus sign there. Okay. So we get two thirds I, one third for the entries. Notice the solution set has only one solution in it, and the first entry, x1, is two-thirds i. The second entry, x2, is one-third. Well, this video went longer than I expected, so it's a quote short unquote video instead of a short video. Have fun with that.